This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. If you are looking to get a competitive advantage against other Amazon products in your niche by upgrading your listings visual assets in a way that truly resonates with your target audience, then this episode is for you. Our guest today will share with us how to leverage the innate tendency of human beings to think in a visual way so that we can craft high converting product images that will make our listing stand out from the crowd. I'm joined today by Kamal Singh, the CEO and founder of AMZ One Step. Kamal is an official member of the Forbes Council. He started selling on Amazon in 2015 with retail arbitrage and eventually built a private label brand that he sold in 2018. Kamal organizes meetups in different cities in Canada and uh, at AMZ One Step, he and his team have crafted over 80,000 infographics for Amazon sellers. He's passionate about conversion optimizations and branding on Amazon. Hey, Kamal, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Marco. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes, that's great because uh, I, what we are going to talk about, I, I, I truly believe in its effectiveness, you know, so I'm really, really happy that we are going to share this with people because I, I truly believe that everyone will benefit from this. So let's start with, uh, uh, you know, uh, letting people understand what is the, the topic of today is going to be visual references. What do we mean when we say visual references and why should Amazon and sellers care about it. No, hundred uh, percent, Marco. So when you know, <clears throat> back in the days, you know, when people were uh, creating their listings on Amazon, you know, if if you had a white background image, your product would sell, right? Over time, Amazon got, have got so much competitive that you know people came up with some infographics, you know, and then the sellers came up with lifestyle images, videos. So people are taking, you know, uh, they're setting a new benchmark every single day. But after uh, the infographics and lifestyle images, like what is that secret sauce? I was trying to find last year, okay, what makes great in, great infographics? What is something which makes a great lifestyle image after like, you know, spending like, you know, hundreds of hours and, you know, I, I think over six months, you know, uh, I was able to figure it out. Okay, you know, this is the concept of visual references, which works really well on Amazon. And if you are implementing the visual references, you know, that you can take your listing images to absolutely the next level. Okay, so what do I mean by visual reference? So this means, you know, when you are showcasing your product feature or product benefit, you know, in reference to something, that's what visual reference means. You know, it's a lot easier said than done. You know, I'm saying it, but it's not, you guys might not understand. Let me give you guys an example. For example, if you're selling uh, a food career, you know, delivery bag, okay? So, you know, who is someone who would buy that product? It's, you know, it's going to be the delivery a delivery guy, you know, who's delivering food for maybe DoorDash or Uber Eats. So that is the target audience. So, so for example, you're selling extra large delivery bag. So you have two options. One is you can say, okay, my my bag is 24 inches wide or 30 inches tall. You know, you can say the numbers, but people, human brain does not resonate with the numbers that much. You know, human brain absorbs visuals much faster than the numbers. Okay. So, so you have option one, you can say numbers of the dimensions, okay, 24 inches, 30 inches, whatever, or you have a second option, you can actually show that how much food this delivery bag can carry. You can say it can carry seven, and you can show seven extra large pizza boxes. You can show two, two liters pop, or maybe, you know, with a bunch of wings and everything, you know, five pound wings, and show that in the picture. So the delivery guy who's going to look at that image is able to connect with it much more easier because now that person will, wow, I can carry three extra large pizzas in this bag. 
you know, oh, wow, I can carry that much extra food. So it's much more uh, relatable uh, as compared to when you're showing the numbers. So you're both images, you're showing the exact same feature, exact same benefit, but in two different ways. And one of them is visual reference, which works 10, 20 times better than a normal image. So, so that's what I mean by visual reference in a nutshell. That's very interesting. I think, you know, people can relate to that easily once we, we say these examples, because everyone is very familiar with, for example, you know, like charity organizations, they they use this a lot. You know, for example, something that comes up to my mind, it's like those, uh, those uh, waste management uh kind of um, organizations that, for example, they say, uh, we got, you know, 20,000 tons of uh, waste from the ocean, for example, you know, and, you know, your mind doesn't process how much is 20,000 tons of waste. But, uh, for example, if they say we, uh, that equals to uh, 25 buses. So that's, that's something I would say, oh, man, or like 150 cars, you say, oh, wow, I mean, that's that's a lot. <laughs> so that, that's something that you, it helps you to visualize numbers that otherwise will be just abstract concepts. And this way you you understand very clearly uh, something, you know, that it's more relatable to you. So this is something that people are very used to uh, see in other contexts, but maybe they never applied it to Amazon. So to, uh, to their listing. So this is the, 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 um, your occasion guys now to start using these visual references in your listings as well. So come on, let's go with the, the process to, uh, how to think creatively about these visual refer- references and how can we adopt them in, into our listings? Let's let's walk people through the, the process of understanding what's our key features and how we can visualize them in, in the way we just mentioned. Okay, no, I think uh, that's, you know, another great, great one. You know, it's, it's a broad question, but I think it's really important. You know, I can, I can say that, okay, use visual references, but how do you think about it? How do you come up with those re- visual references? Because there's like, millions of products, you know, every product is different than others and every product has a unique feature. So how do you come up with a a unique selling point as a visual reference? So, So number one, you have to be creative or you work with someone who is a creative person, okay? Let's say, you know, uh, just for, you know, uh, for, for the sake of understanding, I was able to break it down, okay? So you have to be creative, but at the same time, let me make this job a lot easier for you. So I'm able to break it down in four different steps. So one, think about extreme emotions, okay? For example, you know, uh, you know, you're, let's say, you know, you're selling a product, which is a non-slip bathroom mat. So when you take a shower and when you, when you step on that bathroom mat, it does not slip. Okay. So that is the feature. It's the anti-slip. Add an emotional, not just emotional, add an extreme emotional point. So what if you can create a lifestyle image with a pregnant lady who's carrying a baby inside her tummy? And she's the one who's stepping onto that anti-slip mat. Now, the same image is much more powerful because now people who are like, oh, wow, if pregnant lady is using this product, it's it has to be anti-slip. It has to be, right? Even though if you got no reviews, now you're using that visual reference and taking it to the extreme level. That's called extreme emotions. Or you can do extreme conditions. For example, uh, you are, uh, you know, you're, you're selling a GPS tracker. Right, so uh, so that product is being used by maybe the fleet companies or the shipping companies who have the vehicles on road. But think about you know you can think of extreme condition. Let's say the person is driving in in the mount in the middle of the mountains where there's no that where there's no network. Right, so use that in your image, you you can Photoshop it as well. You don't have to actually drive there. You can just show the Photoshop and tell people what product can work in those extreme conditions. Now, mountains are are being used as a visual reference. So think of like extreme emotions, number two, extreme conditions. And number three would be, uh, you know, you can say extreme use. Uh, How, for example, uh, you know, you know, if something does not break in, you know, um, no matter how much 
weight weight you put onto that. So you can think of something like extreme use, extreme conditions, extreme emotions, or you can also think of that as an end use, right? What is the end use of this product? Uh, let's say you're selling, for example, uh, Almira or like you know a, a dressing case for for tools and stuff. So you, you can store heavy objects in that in that Almira, right? So so the end goal is not to store products. The end goal is also to store like heavier project heavier products. So how much heavier you can maybe show you know. Um, a dumbbell or something, you know, that put on that, okay, this can carry uh, 50 pounds, or you can show some, you know, weight, which, you know, uh, which is comparable. Let's say if something is like tall, you know, compare it with person, like, you know, if, if, if the Almira is like six feet tall, maybe compare it with the person. Another example that I can give you, it's one of my favorite ones. Uh, let's say you're, you know, you're, you're, there's, there's an, you know, image that we did, uh, you're selling a carry on bag for airports, right? So no one really cares about the dimensions of that, you know, carry on bag. What people really care, like how would it look when they carry it, right? So as long as it fits in the airplane, it's perfectly fine. No one cares about the dimension. But instead of, uh, and, and it's a unisex, you know, men can use it, women can use it. There's an image that we did, you know, we compared those, compared the height of the product with the models and we gave model height instead of the product dimensions. Right. So now people can relate it with their height and see how the product is going to look to them as compared to the dimensions of the product. Right. If you're six feet tall, like pretty much most men are six feet, like whether you're five, nine or five, ten, it's, you know, you can easily visualize that. Right. So uh, but if I say, oh, that product is, you know, uh, 36 inches tall, uh, it's it's much more harder. Right. So so you can think of like, you know, extreme use, extreme conditions, extreme emotions and the end use. So this is how you can come up with like so many ideas, no matter what kind of product you're selling. Think of these four and you'll come up with some ideas. OK, very interesting. Yeah, definitely. I can see the potential there. So we need to identify first, you know, one of the main key feature about the product and then see how we can put it into the extreme to to visualize that, that key feature in a way that it's not, you know, with just numbers, but with the, the intended benefit or the, you know, whatever it is, that key feature. That's very interesting. And I think, you know, uh, you you also uh, come up provided to listeners with um, with a, a guide with uh, 99 best examples of visual representation. So guys, I invite you to, to go to the sellerprocess.com and find this episode in the show notes. You will see the, the link to download this guide. You will see 99, uh, examples of the best visual representation references. So, so that it will be, you, you know, you will, you will understand better how to, um, how you can apply that to your products as well. Right. So remember, you can do that in our web website or in the show notes of, of the, in the, the description of the video on YouTube. Uh, but let's let's maybe give some few examples. Like, do you, do you have some of your what are the, the best examples you can think of uh, of, uh, you know, list the Amazon listings that have been using visual references uh, in a successful way? Okay, so there are like so many. So maybe let me give you a couple more examples. Uh, there, there is a product, you know, which is uh, uh, it, it's it's on Launchpad, one of the great sellers. It 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 became the number one a new release product, you know, when we launched it. So it's an anti tan spray. So you know, you it's a tanning spray. Sorry, so so you can you know get yourself you know uh, tanned, body tanning. So um, how how we did it, like you know, to showcase that feature we tanned models like one leg and we did not tan the other leg and we just took it took a picture next day and you know we could clearly see the difference and that was a great visual reference and that worked really really well right so it was the image number like after the main image uh, th that was the second image when people clicked on the main image, you know, they immediately see the second image, which is much more powerful and, you know, they add to cart and that was performing really, really well. That is one example. There's another one, which is one of my favorite ones. Uh, you know, you were selling, you know, there's a vacuum cleaner. It's not a vacuum cleaner. It's like an automatic floor cleaner. It would just, just 
you know uh, just go around your room automatically you know clean all the corners and you know it it just it, it just does that automatically and the great feature of that product was it can clean your carpet and it could also clean the hardwood flooring so we captured an image where uh, the product was just gliding on you know onto the carpet and it was partially cleaning the the hardwood floor and partially cleaning the carpet and the images images said you know cleans carpets and hard floors and the image was so much powerful like you know the image you know when you look at that image you know you kind of realize that the, that an image speaks thousand words and that was literally the proof so uh, as you mentioned you know go out and check that pdf you know you will find a 99 best visual references and that example is also one of that uh, it's part of that uh, pdf so you will find some more uh, examples as well um, you know in, the, in in that pdf and it's more than 100 i added like few bonus visual references as well so no matter what kind of product you're selling that pdf you know you can relate you can mix and match and use that for your product yeah yeah definitely so unfortunately this is a podcast so we cannot show much but uh you guys i really invite you to go to 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 download this pdf because uh obviously this is more like a visual thing that to to for, for you to actually see and uh, uh that will be very helpful for you to understand better how to use visual references for your amazon listings but let's talk about uh, metrics like how do we measure the effectiveness of these new images in our listings um what what how do we know that we've done a good job and uh, it, those new images are working for us a hundred percent so uh you will see the results instantly you know uh for example, you know, what, what you can do, you can also do manage your experiment if you're using that in the A plus content or in the main image to see how well the new assets are performing. Or if not, you know, you can always go back and you know go to your detail page business in the business reports. You can see you know if your sessions went up or if your unit sessions percentage went up, you know, or if it went down, you know, you know, if 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 it's not done correctly, it may go down as well because it may confuse people. So you have to make sure that you you're doing it the right way and go check the stats in the detail page. And you manually have to do do it. There's no way you'll be able to you know uh, track it. In some scenarios, best case scenario, you're gonna see like sales go up, like you know without doing much that means you know the images that you do are working perfectly fine in some scenarios where you're like you know going through a holiday season or you're spending a lot on advertising where you're not sure like what's happening i would recommend go to the business reports and check your unit unit session percentage so the main image is responsible for your traffic and the visual references they are responsible for the conversion so so these are the only ways to uh, to check the effectiveness of you know of of the assets yeah yeah okay for sure for sure so guys look for you know when you're obviously when you're looking at changing the main image probably that will affect the click-through rate and uh, when you're changing when you're adopting these techniques to secondary images or a plus will probably affect the conversion rate so these are two main metrics to to look at but i'm curious to hear from you since you have lots of experience in adopting this this technique to other sellers like what kind of improvements we could expect just to give just give us a, a ballpark like what kind of improvements have you seen in other in other people uh, can you share some like real life numbers just to to have a general idea i'll, I'll give you my example okay I'm, I'm selling this product and also i have seen you know sales getting doubled i've literally seen sales getting doubled multiple times you just have to know like where to place that visual reference and the feature should be your unique selling point and that's where this works like a magic okay do not just use like you know visual reference reference for any random feature use it for the unique selling point so that's one and to answer your questions we we have seen double you know sales going double and going back to the example for my account i was selling disposable cutlery okay and it's a plastic cutlery and uh, and the main you know feature of my cutlery was it wouldn't break like it was so sturdy it was durable that you could even eat like you know hard foods with that fork and knife 
So uh, we were like, okay, you know what? We were saying it in the image previously that, oh, it's durable, made from this material or this plastic, but that wasn't doing the trick. So when I came up with this concept, I'm like, okay, let's test it on my listing. So what I ended up doing, I did a bend test to show the split test, uh, to show the visual reference. So what we did, we showed the disposable cutlery and we bent it all the way, the maximum possible. Like we did the maximum stretch of bending the knife, bending the fork and bending the um, you know spoon. And uh, people were clearly able to see that this plastic cutlery, plastic disposable cutlery is super durable. So the feature was, you know, much more, uh, you know, it was much more um, easier to perceive that, oh, wow, this is perfect. You know, this is exactly what I was looking for because when people, uh, because we saw in the negative comments of like our competitors that when they were eating the food, sometimes, you know, at a party, it would break. Right, so no one wants to host a party where your cutlery is breaking while eating. So, so we 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 captured that feature in the visual reference, and that worked like you know, worked like a magic on that listing. Yeah, 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 definitely. Actually, is something that came up to my mind is uh, an, an, a very famous product. I don't know if you recall this several years ago. Is uh, uh, Will It Blend? It, it was a blender. It, I, I don't remember right now the name of the brand, but they basically created a, a bunch of. It was, it was a blender company, and they created a bunch of videos where they were they were blending. Uh, put it, putting inside the blender like everything, like even iPhones or or hammers or or remote controls, like everything. Well, they will put it inside this blender and uh, it blended. You know, it, it was totally teared apart uh, in at the end. So that was like a very you know extreme kind of things that shows people how powerful was this blender, right? So this is exactly what you just mentioned, you know, uh, going to the extreme and uh, it can be used even for videos, right? So we're not just talking about images. It can go well, very well for, for videos as well, right? So this is very this is very powerful um it's a very powerful tool we can use but i'm i'm curious to ask you about the a plus content because it's a little bit more complex than like regular like main image or secondary images so because there are like different modules right so what what are your suggestions to use visual references when we want to you know embed them into our a plus content I think it it really depends. Like you don't have to repeat yourself. Like for example, if you're if you're showing the visual reference in the image, you don't have to do that once again in the A plus content. Maybe maybe you can tackle a different feature or a different benefit in the A plus content and use that as a visual reference. But uh, but you know it wouldn't really do. A, uh, you know a, it, it's not a big of a difference because when you're already using it and try to avoid like doing more than two visual reference in the image because you still have to you know tell those people you know who do not understand your visual reference you know it's really smart it works for like majority of the people but some people you know to be you know it's it, some people are still dumb you know they still need the information in a basic way as well so so try to give do not do like more than two visual references in the entire listing either do it in the listing or a plus content does not really matter I prefer doing it in the listing images. A plus content, uh, you can use it, uh, but uh, but the key here for the A plus content is to to design it really well to make sure it looks cohesive. You know, it looks different. You're using the all alt keywords. You know. Um, in, in the every image so that's what would make your you know main image uh, your a plus content uh, much more powerful and try to avoid you know uh, multiple visual references in the you know in in, in the listing right it, it's it's doable but uh, but then you know your listing may go off track as well if you're if you're doing too much yeah yeah exactly okay it makes sense because as you mentioned before we need to use it for our unique selling proposition which by definition is unique right so it's just one so no more than no more than two let's say but uh, basically one you usually your unique selling proposition is one right cool so before we we're almost at the end of this conversation but because you're a, you're a, a master of 
you know, uh, optimizing visuals, visual content in the listings. I'd like to ask you about any any other additional tips that we can bring home to optimize our the visual content of our listings. Tell us like your your best tips. <laughs> I think you know if you're. Uh... I think 3D rendering is one of the great ways to uh, to win at Amazon's game. You know, Amazon is getting competitive. You know, sometimes you know your your people hire Amazon sellers and they dem- and they never understand like how their competitors are winning. They are winning because they're doing 3D rendering and uh, and you know and and you go out there and hire a photographer. So photography can never compete with 3D rendering. So so uh, that is something that you need to consider, especially if your product is a reflective product or it's a transparent product or it's a hard surface product or for example if it's a white in color because white uh, reflects a lot of light and or if it's a dark in color and it absorbs a lot of light so photo is you know is is light is capturing light is a photo and photography is difficult on those products so try doing 3d rendering so if you go search for like any supplements everyone is doing 3d rendering or you know there are so many categories which are being dominated by 3d rendering so i think that is the future uh, for uh, for more many products and the another area where 3d rendering could be really really helpful is when you're selling for example really unique product Let's say, you know, I'll give you two examples. If you're selling, you know, we did a complete lifestyle rendering for a product, which was an automatic window opener for a greenhouse, right? So we rendered the entire lifestyle image. Now think of that hiring, you know, going out to a greenhouse and installing your product on a window on the roof and then taking a picture it's going to be super expensive really time consuming at it you know it's not worth your time so just go 3d render the entire and it looks real or the another one two examples there was a product which was a part of commercial plumbing equipment you know if it's a plumbing equipment it goes you know in the you know in the to certain pipes in the commercial buildings in the basement. So no one is going to let you play with their commercial high-rise building to, to take pictures for your product. So those type of products, you know, we did uh, a heavy duty airport hand dryer for the washrooms. And we did that listing, you know, when it was like peak of COVID and no one was gonna allow us to go to the airport and, you know, uh, take some pictures. And for those like complicated and extreme scenarios, you can lifestyle, you know, you can render the entire lifestyle. So that's where 3D rendering can be the key. So I think do consider that that's, that's one of my tips for, you know, uh, for Amazon sellers. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Definitely. There are certain categories that this applies very well. Definitely super useful. Uh, My last question for you is what is your best advice to achieve more with less when it comes to optimizing our Amazon listings? Okay, so if you want to, you know, there's always 80-20 in something. So in Amazon's 80-20 is optimize your main image because main image is the only, it's not the only, but the most, you know, important reasons to drive traffic to your listing. So when people are searching for a keyword on Amazon, they see like your competitors, they see like reviews, price, you know, they see prime badge or like, you know, or if it's FBM, but the most important thing is the main image. If you could make your main image stand out, you're winning already because now you are gaining, I have seen image, I have seen listings whose traffic got doubled. That means their sale got doubled just by changing the main image. Let me give you an example. Okay. So um, there was, I I was in Lisbon, you know, uh, at one of the Amazon conference and I gave um, a talk on Amazon main images and there was a seller who came up to me. He was like, Hey, Kamal, this is my listing. What do you think I can do? And I was like, okay, you know what? Looking at, can you take a look at the other images? And it was, it was a dress for female, uh, audience and uh, so the the this Amazon seller was only showing the front side of the dress. He was not showing the back, and the back was a little bit unique. I was like, okay, you know what? Let's do this. You can show the front and back in the main image so that people can see what exactly they're going to buy. So he did that overnight because that was just an easy fix. It doesn't take a lot of time. So he fi- he did it himself. Front showed front and back, and the next evening he he just called me he's like come on i changed the image but my traffic went down i was like oh that's okay you know we can go back to the previous image he's like no but i don't want to go back to the previous image because my conversion went up and now i'm making more sales 
and I'm making more profit. So the traffic went down, but the conversion went up because the main image is a gateway to your listing. And it main image is not just, it should not just stand out. It should also filter out the unqualified buyers because that impacts your conversion rate. And it also, you know, conversion rate is tied up to, you know, is tied with the Amazon ranking as well right so better the conversion rate better the ranking so he was like his traffic went down but conversion went up his profit went up his in his you know over time his ranking increased but in many scenarios you're looking at you know easy win where you can increase the traffic that means increase the sales as long as the conversion rate stays the same so that's my 20 80 20 rule in the amazon images yeah, I love that. I love that. Really, uh, that's a very well put thing. Uh, advice. Yeah, thank you very much. That that's that's really insightful. I think yeah, most people should should look into that. Uh, the main image is a gateway to your listing, so it should filter out unqualified buyers. I love that. Yeah, definitely, totally, hundred percent with you on that. So. Uh, so now let's, you know, we're uh, about to close the, this conversation. Uh, the um, uh, people obviously, you know, can, can use this, the visual references from the PDF uh, for uh, by, by themselves, you know, using their, their design or whatever way they, they're using. But uh, if if they would like to use your help or uh, have you help them, you know, in uh, in, the, in this process, like what, what can you offer? What's what's your how people can find you and learn more about you? Sure. Yeah. So you can reach us uh, out at you know info at amzonestop.com. That's our email ID, or you can go visit our website www.amzonestep.com, or find us on Facebook, you know Instagram. Just Google us. We are omnipresent, so you'll find us everywhere. <laughs> Awesome, awesome! Thank you very much, Kamal. Yeah, it was a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, you you shared some lots of very insightful, um, in, uh, insightful advice and suggestions for us. Thank you. Thanks, Marco. You know, it was a pleasure being here. Thanks for having me once again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, guys, remember the key to success is to emulate the best. So now it's your turn. Take action on the insights that you just learned from this episode, and you know, uh, learn from this and you know, apply it to your business. And until then, I'll see you in the next episode. Have a productive week. Hey, entrepreneurs! I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview. If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less, optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks, and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business. Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you and leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business. And have a productive week.